Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you all through RoboGuide and how to set up DCS zones. If you haven't heard of DCS zones, they're dual check safety uh, is what DCS stands for. And what they are, are safety zones that prohibit the robot from being able to enter certain zones or prohibits the robots from leaving certain zones, depending on how you set the zone up. Uh, so it's a very, very important skill set to have and Obviously, it's important because it involves safety. So let's go ahead and jump right into this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and come over here and go to DCS XYZ. So this is DCS zones in a Cartesian space. So just keep that in mind. There's other, there's a joint angle DCS zones as well. But for this video to be Cartesian space. So here's the name of our particular DCS zone. So you can just name them just so they're uh, not just a generic CPC as you see numbered all down the side right here. And if you want to, you can change the color of, you know, if you're inside, outside, unsafe, safe. And that's the green, red, black, and yellow you see right there. You can also change your transparency of the zone right there. All right, so let's start getting in kind of the important parts. So right here we have a group. Now this group is generated based on the model of robot that you're using. Uh, notice there's other things that you can add here as well. So if you have like that rail unit or just this mo particular model of robot. And then so this one right here says we're using uh, robot model one. So we're going to select that one. You can also select multiple other zones here as well. So it could be used for the robot tooling or it could be used for any feature inside the cell that maybe you wanted to, to change in a particular instance. So this right here is just a third option if you want to add a third object. If you don't want to add a third object, you can just leave it disabled. Uh, and then this says what user frame do you want to active in. So this is kind of important when I was saying if you want it to be active in certain times and not. Uh, base, you can have certain zones turn on based on the user frame that you're using. And that's something to, really important to keep in mind. These right here are the, rub, the stop types. Uh, so you have power off, which will basically just drop power to the motors. Then you have controlled stop. And the difference is, is it, will, it will actually provide a reverse current to slow down the robot as slow or as fast as it potentially can. Whereas a power off will kind of just power it down and just let the robot kind of drift through its path. Uh, and you may want, depending on what you're doing, like a power off is sometimes a good thing. Like if you're handling glass or anything like that that's sharp, you don't want the robot to stop and it just throws something off. Uh, and then the other uh, option that was there was just a, uh, a no stop. So if you're just wanting to use like these signals as an input, which is actually very powerful. So these are the inputs right here, disabling input. So the disabling input is actually an input to the robot that disables a zone. But you can do it the other way around as well. You can create a zone and have it send an output. So here we have the modes, uh, basically are the style of DCS zone. So the two main ones that we're gonna focus on today is diagonal in and diagonal out. So these diagonal in and diagonal out, uh, the main difference is that it's safe inside that zone. If it's an out, the robot's safe outside of that zone. And we'll demonstrate that and it'll kind of show you uh, a little bit better exactly what's going on there. So here we're using the triad, select next triad, use triad. So we're gonna just drag this around. This is a super cool feature if you know roughly where your object is uh, and you don't have the data to do the calculations to find out where that particular object is. Some companies just don't have their things together and don't know uh, where they're gonna place certain pieces of you know hardware when they're doing their engineering. So sometimes it's the guy who's doing the robot programming that has to figure that out. So we're gonna apply it. Notice how it, it created a zone with those two triads that we just had. So there's no Z value to this, so it's just a flat plane. So we gotta create that Z depth there. So we're gonna say negative 800, and let's go po like positive 2000, apply it. Boom, there we go. As you can see, it created a, a pretty large DCS zone, the robot's inside of it, and also notice the, the robot, the zone is green. So the reason why that zone is green is because this is an inside zone. So the robot's safe anytime it's inside this zone, as you can see here. Now you do want to minimize this and make this as small as you potentially can, because the data 
does slow down the processor. So the bigger the box, the more data it takes, the more data it takes, the more it can slow down your robot. So let's go to DCS, go into our DC, DCS menu here. Then we're gonna go and apply these DCS parameters. Okay, pending. And then we have to cycle the power of this uh, robot. And then you have eight cycle power right here. Yes. And so this is going to process, it's just going to cycle the power and then it's going to boot back up. Okay, so as you can see right now, the robot's in a good running condition. And what we're going to do is we're going to jog the robot outside of its zone. All right, here we go. Here we go. And now it went black. Now notice something that's pretty critical here. The robot's tooling is outside of the safe zone. So this is something to definitely keep in mind and you cannot forget this because uh, this is actually something fairly easy to forget. It will show you exactly why this robot protruded through the zone with its tooling before it faulted out. So we're going to come back into the zone, get into a good state again, go back to our DCS user models this time. So DCS user model and UM is, how, is the abbreviation for that. So we're going to add two user models here or two elements to this user model, okay? And so the first one is uh, just going to be the faceplate, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we've already generated this before. So the shape is the box, and we put a size in there of 50 in the X, Y, and then 200 in the Z. So notice we just created a box around the tool, and we applied that. Uh, so now, if you notice, there's the box around the tooling. When that tooling is not enabled, then the robot uh, doesn't look at that for its safeties. And this is also able to be assigned based on the user model, or not the user model, the user frame that you're using. So that way, if you're switching different robot toolings out with the tool changer, we're just gonna apply these right here. Da -da -da -da. So anytime you make a change to DCS, you have to reapply the settings, cycle power again. But if you have an automatic tool changer and you're changing out toolings, it's very important because now you can enable different DCS zones for the particular style of toolings that you have. Because you, ha you may have robot toolings with completely different geometries from one another. All right, so we're going to go ahead and shift reset. And we're going to jog this robot outside of its zone. Boom. Notice as soon as the tooling breached the zone that it stopped. So now we've enabled that uh, user model. And the robot stops as it should. So you definitely want to make sure that you don't forget that. You can see it really good right here. All right, so we're gonna go back into our DCS Cartesian. And by the way, the CPC stands for Cartesian Position Check. Okay, so we're just gonna give it a name and we're gonna create a different zone type here. So we're just gonna kind of leave all this the same. We're gonna put our user model back on there, user model one for our tooling. SPI one, we're just gonna turn this off for right now because we don't have any safety inputs to be able to turn off and on right now. We're gonna leave it at controlled stop and we're gonna change our diagonals to a diagonals out. Okay, we're gonna edit a location on the screen. So we're gonna use the triads again. If you know the data of your item, like if you have the CAD drawing, it says where it's located at in, in relationship to the zero point of the robot. See how it puts the triad right in the zero? So you can manually type in those numbers uh, and create your DCS zone. So boom, you notice that, see how the X2, Y2, Z2 just generated some numbers? Now we're gonna create another triad. We're gonna use, are we using that triad? We gotta select the next triad. So select the next triad. Hold on. Apply it, okay. Boom, and so it auto-generated a triad at the center of the robot. You see the location is at the zero point. Now we're gonna grab it and move it. Boom, you see how it's changing that DCS zone as we sit here? We're going to take it that way, just move it over there, and then we're going to use the triad location, hit OK. Notice it's still in a flat plane like the original one that we did. It's because there's no Z value to this. So we're going to add an 800 here, and then we're also going to add a 2000 here as well. Boom. And as you can see, it generated a box right there. So this diagonal out is a DCS zone that if you breach this space here, that it is going to uh, e-stop the robot. So we're going to have to apply these DCS parameters again. All right, now that we got our DCS zone applied, we're going to basically just demonstrate the same thing again. So we're going to shift reset, move in the 
not X direction, our axis one. And then we're going to move forward until boom, there you go. Now the uh, tooling has breached that diagonal out zone and you can see the robot has e-stopped and faulted out. So that's the main difference between the diagonal ins and diagonal outs. It kind of wraps up the DCS, at least the, at least the basic DCS portion of this video. We'll be doing some other videos that goes a little bit deeper into like some more details and we're just gonna have a lot more content. Like eventually we wanted to show you guys like a 2D drawing and make our DCS zones based on those different CAD drawings to show you how these tools are really, really powerful and whenever you have all of the CAD data from like cell layout and all that good stuff, that you can more easily generate these DCS zones and the big thing is more efficiently and more quickly and more safely. So if this video was useful for you guys, hit that subscribe button down below and we'll catch you on the next one.